And let's turn attention to Asia, where the Chinese President Xi Jinping has pledged over $50 billion in financing for Africa over the next three years and promised to help create a million jobs on the continent. He made the pledge at the China African Forum in Beijing, being reportedly attended by more than 50 African leaders and the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Describing this period as his nation's best period in history with Africa, President Xi said China is ready to deepen cooperation with African countries in industry, agriculture, infrastructure, trade, and investment. China, the world's number two economy, is Africa's largest trading partner and has sought to tap the continent's vast natural resources, including copper, gold, lithium, and rare earth minerals. It has also furnished African countries with billion loans that have helped build much needed infrastructure, but sometimes created controversy uh, to the nation's indebtedness to it. Now let's um, have more on this conversation as we bring in um, African affairs analyst Patrick Coker. Good to have you join us. He joins us from the UK via Zoom. Thank you very much. All right, so let, let's um, start with, I mean, a lot has been said in this summit. Um, a, a lot of plans, a lot of proposals being made. And as you go through the conversation, what, what does it tell you about the future of, of China-Africa relations and what that would mean um, for, for the West or the implication of that for the West? Uh, first, it's a welcome development. However, such uh, relationships must be uh, taken on their merits. Uh, China and uh, Africa relations did back to uh, so many years, probably more than, uh, say, 40, 50 years, uh, especially uh, when it comes to trade. You will also agree with me that there are um, strategic global uh, aspect to this relationship. There is this competition between uh, the West and the East, and indeed the need for the Global South to uh, catch up with developments uh, with the other uh, part of the world. So there are implications, whether for the West, and there are implications for Africans. But more than anything, Africans must uh, sit down come up with their own strategy and get the best out of these relationships. Hmm. And you know, from what we see, Africa is now set to receive um, more Chinese financing of about 50 billion. And we understand that a huge part of that is going to come as debt. But if you, if you follow through with this summit, there was no mention of debt in the, in the speech of President um, uh, Xi Jinping or even debt relief. What do you make of that? Uh, and uh, as you speak, you know, you were analyzing the relationship. Is it a mutually beneficial relationship? Well, honestly, from the little I've uh, experienced and researched, uh, mutual beneficial, uh, mutually being beneficial, sorry, being beneficial mutually is far-fetched. Uh, we have reports that... Uh, Africa is holding the shorter end of the uh, relationship. You agree with me that yes, Africa is naturally uh, blessed when it comes to resources, and these resources are needed uh, everywhere, especially with the kind of uh, industrial revolution China has witnessed in the past 50 years or thereabout. Now, uh, yes, debt, debt itself is not bad, but you, uh, what I have also discovered is that uh, debt is being uh, used to dampen the relationship between Africa and China. In any case, if this debt will make Africa rise up from just being... Uh, Continent, a continent that would provide the raw materials, then we'll say it's welcome. Where there is no mutual uh, development, when it comes to technological transfer, when it comes to economic, uh, you know, industrial development, then I think uh, Africans need to really sit down 
and weigh the benefits before they go into uh, taking in most of this financial support. Mm. And, you know, you, you also, in all of this, you also want to consider that China, in 2021, China made a, a pledge to Africa to buy products, what, about $3 billion, I think it was, and that has not happened. And as you listen to some of these, um, some of these pledges and promises and proposals, how, how realistic are they and what is the best that Africa can get? I must say the, the, the bottom line is the industries in the West, in the East, in China or wherever, will not function without the raw materials from uh, Africa. We Africa must just wise up and get act, their acts together, educate their citizens, transfer technology, build on this technology and also reverse the process of sending uh, all these natural resources out without any value chain. If you don't add value, chain, uh, value to what you are sending out, the tendency is you, are, you, you, you don't develop. And with our kind of population, we just need to uh, gear up, educate, empower, reset, and indeed get our hands on the till to make sure that we also add value to our uh, uh, natural resources. Mm. Uh, anything short of this will always be a case of uh, we giving them our uh, raw materials and they add value to it. They send them back to Africa. And we now use our scarce uh, resources uh, to, to buy and we become a consumer uh, continent. Mm. That has to change. Thank you so much for your time. We're following through with the summit um, and we continue to discuss uh, matters arising. We've been speaking with African Affairs um, Analyst Patrick Oka. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much.